Hello friends, this video on p-block part 55 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next question is why ICL is more reactive than I2? I have told that II bond is weaker. So the II bond is stronger than ICL bond. Right? So this ICL bond is weaker because X-X dash bond is weaker. This is stronger, stronger. This bond is weaker, this bond is strong, so this bond breaks easily, so this is more reactive. Deduce the structure of BRF3 on the basis of Vesper theory. So this is my bromine and we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll have fluorine, one chlorine here, one chlorine here, correct? Fluorine will be having Electron. This bromine will have two lone pairs. So now based on uh, Vesper 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it will be SP, SP1, P2, P3. SP1, P2, P3, D. SP3, D. Hybridization, right? So we have three bond pair, two lone pair. Three bond pair. That is my BF bond and two lone pair. LO and lone pair. So three bond pair, two lone pair, what you will get? You will get trigonal bipyramidal. Trigonal bi trigonal bipyramidal. So I have bromine here. Now this two lone pair will occupy the equatorial position to minimize the lone pair repulsion. So there will be one Lone, uh, what do you call uh, this? Two electrons here, two electrons here, one fluorine here, and one fluorine here, one fluorine here. This is my equatorial position, this is my axial. The other two will take axial position, but it will be a little bit bent. Why? Because of the repulsion from this, this fluorine will be a little bit bent. So this two lone pairs acquire the this one equatorial position, this is my equatorial position. Okay, to avoid this uh, repulsion, to minimize the lone pair, lone pair repulsion. And at this axial, uh, these two axial F, fluorine will also be bent towards this equatorial F. Why? Because of the lone pair repulsion. So it will be slightly bent T. That is how it will look. Slightly bent T. So it is like this. This is how it will look. Because the lone pair, you won't be seeing it. It will be slightly bent not this much bent, maybe yeah, this is how it looks slightly bent T. Okay. Let's talk about the bleaching powder. See, we have discussed bleaching powder. Bleaching powder is a pale white solid CaOCl2, right? Calcium oxychloride. It is prepared by a reaction. We have seen the reaction also by preparation by the reaction between the slake lime and chlorine gas, my CaOH2 will react with chlorine to give CaOCl2 and water. And this process is called Batchman's process. Talk about the properties of bleaching powder. It has very strong smell. It, it in moist air it decomposes. So if I have moist air, CaOCl2 some carbon dioxide and water from the air it will decompose to form calcium carbonate and HClO. This is hypochlorous acid. This actually give HCl and nascent oxygen. And this nascent oxygen actually is responsible for bleaching action. And this bleaching powder actually also react with the uh, acid. CaOCl2 is a bleaching powder. It react with acid to form CaCl2 and chlorine. water molecule actually. We talk about the uses of bleaching powder. It is used to manufacture chloroform. It is used for bleaching uh, agent to bleach wood pulp, cotton, etc. It is also used for disinfecting my lavatories, drainage, etc. It is also used for sterilizing my drinking water. So these are the uses of 
bleaching pot. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.